Welcome to Model Horse Tag School. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to do chaps. So, in the packet, you have mirrored images, and it'll either be 8 inch or 6 inch, and they are basically the same except for height or length. Okay, if you have to modify length, modify it down here. Just kind of round it off or square it off if you want. But that's where you do your modifications. Um, working chaps are usually square. That's what I'm going to show you how to make. The rest of this is all decorations. There are so many different types of chaps. I tried to provide you with the most common decorations, um, such as these belt um, tops that would go up here. They're usually tooled, um, heavily tooled, and then they're dyed like a brown. Um, if you wanted to, you could um, extend it with a leather belt up here and glue that on as well. That adds bulk though, and I'm trying to do as little bulk as possible. Um, so if you can find a thin enough fabric or something, you might be able to do lots of layers. This is your fringe. I recommend that the fringe go this way because gravity does not work well in fringe that goes horizontal. So this will allow your fringe to lay down worth, word better. Um, you could do short or you could do long and you can move, you can put that line wherever you want, but I want you to see you can do short, you can do long fringe. Um, the showier the chaps, the longer the fringe, like bull riding chaps. Bull riding chaps usually have one of these um, designs. Usually um, it's got like uh, conchos and then latigo ties flopping out of it. Um, same thing here would have conchos and then latigo. This here could be on the um, um, on the you know the side um, like here. That's what these are. Usually they're down here, and then your cross or whatever's up here. Well, this here you could also use as your back buckle at, um, or back connector so for the back. But there's not a lot of room to do that. I did provide it. Um, it's a possibility. Again, this there's just so many variations. I want to get you what you can use. It's up to you. Um, these would be a contrasting uh, material, um, and then they would it would glue right along the edge on the front. Your fringe would glue uh, right side to wrong side, so it'd be on the back of your. So you don't see this this um, block here. Okay. Um, I think that's about it so I have I have her I still need to do her hair I think her hair is too long although it's really pretty um, and I picked a blue suede so this is a suede it's a very lightweight suede very thin and has a good body all right so the first thing you need to do is figure out um, where it's gonna fall um, in the back because we're gonna connect that first so you want you want your edge to be on the side of your rider. So you see we're right along this side. You don't want it back here. Uh, you don't want it too far front. You want it to be right. That was the way I could say. So it's parallel to your rider leg. And then you want it to make sure it's going to fit in the crotch. So pull that through. Is crotch a bad word? I don't know. Um, and then this is going to fit right on the hips. Okay, that's the correct way. So we're going to go ahead and pull it tight over here because we know we have it nice and snug in the crotch. It needs to be snug because when she sits, you don't want too much wrinkle. It's going to wrinkle a little bit, like right in there, but the tighter it is, the less wrinkle you're going to get. So now that I've got an idea of where that's going to hit back here, so if you notice, there's not um, that, that piece that would have the, um, that decorative piece that would be tooled. It's going to go almost all the way to here. So that's, that's what we've done there. So that is where I want it. And now I have the other piece. And because I want to make it symmetrical, basically I would, um, this piece got, that, that was a mistake, that piece. So it wasn't supposed to be that short, but it's actually gonna work out really well here. So now we, we're gonna glue. We're gonna glue 
like that. I've done it different ways, but the connection back here in the back is the most important so that your um, that your legs fall the way they're supposed to. And I'm using the um, the beginning of that decorative area as my guide. So I want to make sure. Okay, once I'm sure that that is dry enough, I'll go ahead and trim this. Okay, so now we're gonna um, do the leg. You can, if you want, use Velcro as a closure. And I've done that. And it's nice to do Velcro because then you want them just in jeans. They can just be in jeans, so that's, uh, one thing you can do, um, usually though, for the best fit, you make it permanent. So I will, and you can cut this smaller if you want, um, but I am going to roll this as tight as I possibly can. And I don't like where that is. I'm going to pull this a little bit. Because once I glue this in place, that's it. And you want it tight. So, got that wrapped nice and tight around her leg. And I, I'll probably glue it all the way down along the side, along the seam of the jeans that she's wearing or the pants that she's wearing. It's always helpful to have a fabric that does well with glue. So as you can see, I'm not doing any decoration whatsoever on this. These are working uh, chaps, no fringe, no frills. Yeah, blacksmith um, chaps are cut higher and they have pockets in them. Okay. So now we need to get the other side right. And this side's going to be harder because you don't get to flip things around. Pull it tight. Tuck it in. And I would do the pull tight from the back, not the front. So I don't know if you've seen it, but the bull riders, their connection stops higher. So usually right at the knee, this thing can move. So they really only have the thigh part connected. So you can modify for that if you have to, but I just wouldn't glue. Up to you. Okay. Now, do I have it the way I want it? It's not high enough. This crotch doesn't fit. To make sure the crotch fits. Okay. And again, I'm going to glue along the blue jeans seam. Not that there is one on these pants, but where the seam would be. Now I was doing mostly uh, Velcro on mine, so I could take them off and on. Okay, now for a buckle. 
So, options. Um, so this was a cast Rio Rondo button. That's really flashy. I like that one. Your standard utility buckle would work. Um, I believe I made them. I think they're eighth inch. I made it eighth inch. So those would work. Um, you could use like, uh, this is a six millimeter jump ring with a tongue, you know, like a cinch ring. Uh, that would work. Um, if it's permanent though, you could just do one of these conchos. Rio Rondo sells them and they're they're kind of like that, you know, when you just need something decorative. I've used these as horn caps. I mean, we could do the heart if we wanted to, but got all these different ones, um, and they're oval. So I picked that one. And you can get these at Rio Rondo. They're really pretty, pretty um, cool. And um, and I just keep them around for stuff like this. So I think that's what I'm going to do with her is I'll just go ahead and um, use the concho. I'll have to use super glue for that to stay on. So if I'm going to do that and they're not coming off, then I can just go ahead and um, pull this tight on her hips. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this. Now, the placement of your chaps is really important if you, you put belt, a buckle on the jeans as well. I didn't. Um, but you don't want buckle buildup. And sometimes they do have buckle buildup. They, they, uh, but sometimes they just do the chaps buckle. And they don't bother with the... Um, I'm going to pull this tight. Okay, and then I'll just go ahead and put that buckle on. So there you go, full length. Working chaps, she's all set to go riding. I uh, want to thank you for spending time with me today. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and have yourself a really good day.